Okay, good evening, everybody. It's David, and welcome to our product training webinar. Uh, still, some of you that are dialing in, so we are going to wait just another minute. It's good to have you all here, and I hope that all of you are uh, taking care of yourselves, being safe, uh, protecting one another. And uh, main thing is to stay positive. We can get through this. Uh, and there are certainly many, many options. If you haven't seen the webinar that I did two weeks ago and also as well as last week where we discussed options for protecting yourself against the coronavirus and COVID-19, please go ahead and go to our YouTube channel and check that out. There's many, many options that are available uh, for protecting your environment with things like ozone air purifiers, and many natural antiviral compounds that are known to kill viruses, even some specifically that have been tested against other coronaviruses. So we're going to be digging in a little bit deeper this evening into one specific antiviral, which is copper. And the reason we're going to uh, focus in on this is because, of course, before the whole global pandemic started, uh, we were recommending copper supplementation as a way to elevate or maintain and make sure you're elevating your levels of copper peptide. And of course, this is going to facilitate activating stem cells. And we are going to be talking about X39 this evening, the role of copper in human metabolism, what kind of benefits you can expect from uh, making sure you have enough copper in your diet, either through food or supplementation. And of course, a little bit of the current research that's going around that has people so excited that copper may be the answer to ridding us of the novel coronavirus and COVID-19. So I think uh, we can go ahead now and get started. Okay, so. Uh, first things first, there is a very long history of the use of copper in medicine and as, a, as an antiviral and antimicrobial, antibacterial compound. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had mentioned this before, uh, the very first study that I was involved with when I graduated from college was in looking at copper, silver, and gold as antibacterial uh, materials that would be used in IV line sets uh, to prevent bacteria from getting into the body through an IV line set and giving a patient an infection. So now uh, there's been this research at, uh, you can see West Texas A&M, and they're developing a adhesive that's coated with copper and an antimicrobial copper. And what they're looking to do is to protect surfaces in hospitals. So the whole idea behind this, of course, is that uh, the, the virus uh, goes airborne and settles on surfaces. So if you have surfaces made of copper, uh, then you could potentially kill them on contact. And this is a very, very important point relative to our overall health that we're gonna get into in some detail today. Um, it would be great to understand the mechanism because then these things become a little less scary. But you can see here, this is incredibly exciting. The stickers are made with copper alloy. It's a special antimicrobial copper and it's designed to kill 99.9% .9 of harmful pathogens. I like that number, 99.9%. <laughs> So let's take a look at this. The other thing is, uh, we'll take a look at this as well. Copper is one of the oldest known uh, antimicrobials. And as a matter of fact, it's been around for thousands of years. We're just seeing modern medicine catching up with this. So look at this right here. Copper can destroy respiratory viruses. Now let's think about this problem a little bit. Um, all forms of life, have their own intelligence. And it's often argued that viruses do not have any type of innate intelligence. I don't believe this. 
I believe that all uh, forms of life, and you could argue, I suppose, that a virus is not a form of life, but let's look at it this way. This is very interesting. What does this virus attack? The respiratory system and the lungs. People have to go on respirators then to get more oxygen. Well, very powerful antivirals are oxygen-based compounds. Oxygen uh, that we breathe can inhibit viral replication. The oxygen radicals that are produced in the immune system, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, which are oxygen radicals, all destroy viruses on contact. So I think this is a little bit, maybe it's not intelligence in a life form that we would normally think about, but I do think the virus knows what it's doing here. And uh, that's important information because it means we can use this information to attack and destroy the virus. Um, maybe about one week ago, a company announced it was coming out with a ozone generator specifically designed to kill COVID-19. Uh, hydrogen peroxide injections, injections of ozone, have been used uh, in the past to kill viruses. So anyway, that, that is, uh, let's get back to talking about copper, otherwise I'll <laughs> go off on a tangent here. But copper can destroy respiratory viruses. That's critically important to forming a strategy about how we can protect ourselves with copper. So uh, I'll show you the study here in a little bit that was done at the University of Southampton that was published on using copper to kill respiratory viruses. But one section in particular I want to bring to your attention is this right over here. Exposure to copper destroyed the viral genomes and irreversibly affected virus morphology, including, including disintegration of the envelope and dispersal of, of surface spikes. Now, what does this all mean, if I can say it correctly? First of all, a simple way to think about this is there are enveloping and non-enveloping viruses. In this case, the coronavirus is an enveloping virus. Way to think about this is that this is like a protective shell that a virus will use to hide from the immune system. And it also helps a virus resist the immune system of the host, making the virus more deadly and more effective at what it does. Copper has the ability to destroy the envelope of the virus and rip it apart. Now that's important because without that envelope, now the virus is exposed to its environment and now the virus, uh, now the immune system can go ahead and attack the virus. Now, furthermore, copper is capable of unwinding viral DNA. And this means that the virus can be rendered inactive almost immediately. So this is remarkable that such a, a simple molecule, copper, the correct copper ions, um, are capable of having this type of potent effect on a virus. So we shouldn't over, even though it's simple, we shouldn't overlook it. All right, let's move on here a little bit. And the, uh, one thing about this article that I wanted to bring to your attention is right over here. Copper has been exploited for health since ancient times. And even in ancient Egypt and Babylonia, soldiers uh, would put uh, copper into their wounds to reduce infection. Now, in m more modern times currently, there are starting to be wound dressings and bandages made with copper. And as a result, uh, these dressings are designed to inhibit infection. Now, there is a study on copper peptide, which is what we elevate with X39. And uh, what's so interesting about this is, let's say that you take an open wound in the body, and in this clinical study, 
it was discovered that there was about a 38% chance of an infection. When you inject copper peptide, which is what X39 elevates, the incidence of infection goes down to three or four percent. So copper peptide as a carrier of copper is extraordinarily powerful at reducing infection. Now, of course, this refers to bacterial infection and not a viral infection, but still case in point, uh, copper has been known since even ancient times as having these medicinal properties. And um, not really up until recently, uh, modern medicine has been willing to look at this as a uh, way that we could push down viruses and bacteria. Okay. Now here's this study that we referenced a little bit earlier from University of Southampton. And again, it gets into a little bit more detail here, talking about how copper surfaces, uh, not in the body, but copper surfaces can be an effective way at destroying different types of viruses, respiratory viruses, which of course is what we're all concerned about now. Uh, not only the coronavirus, but SARS and also MERS. So there's a common thread here to the way that copper works. And drugs are often targeted to work one specific way. But uh, copper, on the other hand, as it gets into the body in, in the form of an ion, it's the electrical properties of the copper that's making it so effective. So it'd be very easy to see that because of its electrical properties, it has a very broad range of applications in killing harmful pathogens. Simple, very, very effective. And then again, here is yet another study. Now, uh, this one I wanted to bring up because uh, many people like to use things like silver colloid as antivirals. And uh, silver colloid has a very, very long history. Some people make it at home and it's very simple and inexpensive to make and it's very useful as a way to destroy harmful bacteria and harmful viruses. Uh, so this study was just taking a look at both silver and copper. Now, of course, um, this webinar is about copper, uh, not only because of it's a powerful antiviral, but because with copper supplementation, we're making sure you get enough copper in your diet. Uh, this is also going to benefit the results that you're seeing with X39. So let's talk about that a little bit. We don't want to dwell completely on COVID-19. Uh, let's just hope that this is going to be nothing more than a nuisance. We will all take our copper and we will be through this in no time. Okay, so we want to take a look at if uh, you were just to use copper as a supplement or you were going to engineer your diet, and you say, okay, I'll have liver once a week. Uh, I'll get some dark chocolate every day. I'll have my cashews and sesame seeds and some other things and make sure that I get adequate amounts of copper. Maybe you're gonna drink a shot of wheatgrass every day, whatever your <laughs> form of copper is. Um, or if you're gonna say, I'll, you know, it's very inexpensive. You can get two milligrams of copper glycinate or chelated copper. What type of, why else would I do it then other than I know it's gonna elevate copper peptide, uh, which makes me young and healthy and activates my stem cells. Well, as it turns out, there are many benefits associated with copper. And uh, this is extraordinarily exciting. And not only this, but when you're looking at some of these benefits, it's probably not surprising that these benefits show up in our research with X39. So for those of you that are new, our X39 patch is a light therapy product. It stimulates the skin with light and elevates a naturally occurring peptide called GHK. This GHK binds with copper and forms a complex called copper peptide. And this is where the magic is because copper peptide is able to reset thousands of genes to a younger, healthier state. And as a consequence, copper peptide activates the stem cells and people experience some uh, remarkable wound healing 
and uh, youth restoring effects. But let's look at copper, research on copper. What is it found? Well, first of all, it's been found that copper has antioxidant properties. And of course, antioxidants are going to protect our cells from damage, um, making it very, very valuable. Now, as a result, because copper is an antioxidant, it's also gonna have anti-inflammatory benefits. And this is exactly what we see when we study X39, is that when we, people use X39, it will mobilize the copper, and as a result, reduce inflammation. Now, uh, back in the 1970s, there was a study looking at the old wives' tale of uh, what happens when you wear copper jewelry. Does it have any effect on arthritis or not? And under very certain circumstances, in other words, when a person applies a true copper bracelet and they leave it on and they don't take it off, the copper has time to, through transdermal mechanism, to go through the skin and you do find elevated levels of copper now in the blood and this produces a reduction in inflammation and uh, is of aid for people that have arthritis. I personally think it's more effective to take a copper supplement than depend on a copper bracelet, um, but you know, choose whatever works best for you. Uh, also, it's fair to mention I'm not a medical doctor and any of the recommendations here uh, please uh, speak with your healthcare practitioner. Um, copper supplementation is not for everyone. Uh, if someone has a pre-existing condition with their liver, um, they may not want to supplement with copper. So speak with your doctor. But this is anyway information that you can be armed with to make a decision. Now, uh, moving on here a little bit, uh, Dr. Melinda Connor, who we've been working with now for oh, maybe about the past uh, nine years on clinical studies at LifeWave. She, had, she has conducted many clinical studies now on X39. And one of the benefits that she saw by elevating copper peptide is that it uh, created a statistically significant reduction in blood pressure. So in other words, copper peptide is capable of lowering blood pressure. And here, uh, you can see one of the benefits that's been found in studies is that uh, copper holds the potential for not only reducing blood pressure, but also reducing cholesterol. Now, uh, just a, a brief side note on cholesterol. Um, research will show, and I've had this conversation with uh, uh, our, our doctor, Dr. Holtuanger, for many years now. There's no association between dietary cholesterol, so if you eat eggs every day, and heart disease, and blood levels of cholesterol. Uh, cholesterol is gonna be made in the liver, and then it's plated in the liver, and then of course we need cholesterol for manufacturing hormones. So low levels of cholesterol are not necessarily a good thing. What we wanna look at is the uh, LDL versus HDL, and Within the LDL, we look at the particle size. So the smaller particle size on the LDL is the one that could damage the uh, cardiovascular system because the, these particles are very sharp. The large particles of LDL are puffy and they will pass through our arteries without damaging them. So anyway, that's just a side note on cholesterol. Now, another benefit that we see with X39 is that it supports the immune health. Now, on this, health, on this page here, showing the health benefits of copper, they say boosts. Uh, we used to use the term boosts uh, until the uh, FTC here in the United States, they changed their view on this and they said, well, if you're supporting the immune system, then that's a natural process. If you're boosting the immune system, now you have a drug. So that's why we don't use the term boost anymore, and we're uh, cleaning that out of our marketing materials. But in any case, however you want to interpret it, how does this actually work? Well, uh, we found with X39 that it would support the health of the intestine, of the gut. 
And this is where the some part of the immune system, the immune cells are manufactured. And as it turns out, copper plays a role at increasing the total number of white blood cells. So this is the connection between copper and copper peptide and supporting the overall immune, immune health. There's other connections too, uh, but this is one of the important ones. Of course, another important part of the immune system it's going to be right up in the uh, thymus. All right, bone density. Now, this one's really interesting uh, because many people are concerned or uh, they suffer with osteoporosis. So, is there anything natural that we can do with this other than simply taking calcium or vitamin D supplements? As it turns out, there is. There is an intimate relationship between a number of minerals other than the obvious ones for improving bone density. Uh, one of them is boron. Boron is a, a very interesting mineral, uh, but only about three milligrams are necessary to harden bone. So someone with osteoporosis, they should look into boron as a means for improving and strengthening their bones. Now, another one, of course, is copper. And what's exciting about this is that uh, copper may actually be able to prevent osteoporosis. Now, I suspect one of the links that's going to be discovered is that it's not just the uh, copper ion that's doing this, but it's the ability of copper to bind with copper peptide and the increase in stem cells is leading to an improvement in bone density. But that's just a hypothesis that I have. I don't believe it's the copper on its own. I believe it's copper peptide that's actually doing that. Uh, we also had worked with a scientist in France that was researching a extract from seaweed. And um, uh, Padina pavinica uh, seaweed, which is what we get our uh, Nirvana extract. Uh, but another extract of Padina pavinica can actually increase bone density. Uh, and it's not a, a calcium supplement, rather it pulls calcium into the bone, reversing osteoporosis. Okay, now here is a big one. And saying this simply, collagen is perhaps one of the most important and overlooked anti-aging and age reversal nutrients known because collagen production starts to shut down at about age 25. And as a result, it leads to the collapse of the structure of the cell. So this is really referring to a biophysics mechanism rather than biochemistry. But suffice it to say that most people don't like it when they get a reduction in collagen because they start to develop lines and wrinkles. But the fact of the matter is that collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. Um, this is happening inside our body, not just on the, on the skin. And if we want to have rapid wound healing and supportive wound healing, we need to elevate our collagen. And no surprise here, copper is found in the skin and plays a very important role in elevating collagen. And of course, again, the mechanism here is that copper is binding with copper peptide and copper peptide is turning on production of collagen and stem cells. And finally, uh, on this last uh, slide, and then I'm gonna go over to uh, last point, and then I'm gonna go over to something else on the zinc. But of course, uh, we spent uh, some time recently talking about the study that Dr. Gaetan Chevalier did on the remarkable benefits of X39 on brain cognition. And so what happens here is that copper peptide is carrying the copper into the brain, we're going to have very powerful neurological effects. And we see even after just three weeks of using X39, dramatic changes in the health and function of the brain. Now, there was one last point here that I wanted to bring up, and it has to do with zinc. Some people out on the internet are recommending taking very large doses of zinc, like 50 milligrams of zinc. And I do not recommend this. Again, I'm not a medical doctor. I do research. 
uh, in this field and you can consult with your own healthcare practitioner, but I believe this is contraindicated. And a uh, reason for this is that it's been found on, uh, on coronavirus that too much zinc can actually be used by coronavirus to embed itself into the tissue and foster the infection. Smaller amounts of zinc are okay, but, uh, but not too much. Uh, and actually too much zinc anyway will depress immune function. So uh, stay away from larger doses of zinc until more information on this is available. Small amounts of zinc are okay. All right. So I wanna thank everyone for being here this evening. Uh, we will go ahead and <laughs> see that uh, there are a few of our members here that have been on webinars all day. Uh, congratulations, that is not an easy feat. And I hope that you're staying well hydrated and looking after yourself. Okay. Oh, great question. How does taking copper supplementation daily not accumulate in the body to unsafe levels? Well, as it turns out, there are detoxification pathways for copper. As a matter of fact, uh, when we were launching X39, one of the clinical studies that we pointed to was where an injection of 50 milligrams of copper was given. Now, the daily recommended amount of copper is less than one milligram today, uh, although 50 years ago, 70 years ago, it was three to five milligrams daily and up to 10 milligrams non-toxic. Anyway, in this study, 50 milligrams was injected and within four hours, all of that excess copper had been cleared from the blood. So su uh, suffice it to say that the body does have um, detoxification pathways for copper. So someone's saying here, uh, should you add zinc along with copper glycinate? Under normal circumstances, I would say yes. You could certainly take a 25 milligram supplement, but because of the fears now of coronavirus, um, taking a zinc supplement might not be okay. Just stay away from larger doses of zinc if you're taking five or 10 milligrams of zinc, um, you need that amount in your body anyway, but I would stay away from the higher doses like 25 or 50 milligrams. Uh, do I recommend taking collagen supplements daily? It certainly is an option and it does depend what the rest of your diet looks like. So for example, if you're taking vitamin C, Vitamin C will help stimulate the formation of collagen. If you're taking whey protein, whey protein will support the formation of collagen. Um, if you have an injury, then taking collagen would probably be a pretty good idea. For example, if you have a loss of cartilage in your knee and you wanted to look at a natural way of repairing the damage as opposed to uh, having surgery, then yes, I'd recommend collagen supplementation. It's really inexpensive today, and you can find uh, collagen protein powder just about everywhere. All right, what form of copper should we take for faster assimilation? Uh, the common ones on the market appear to be pretty good, copper glycinate or copper chelate. I personally like copper glycinate, um, based on uh, prior research work when we've looked into this, um, also like magnesium glycinate as an example, that molecule uh, happens to get into the cell and it's assimilated very well. So I tend to like uh, copper glycinate and magnesium glycinate, um, but copper chelate is also known to be pretty good. Well, this is a little trick question here. <laughs> there are so many collagen powders doesn't it matter the quality and source of where it comes from? Yes, absolutely it does. Um, there is a collagen that's difficult to get that's from Argentina, from uh, grass-fed cows. And there's also uh, collagen products from New Zealand. And New Zealand is, is uh, 
highly prized for its purity. So yes, I'd say absolutely, like anything else, uh, the quality and the source do matter. Um, staying away from products manufactured in China is difficult, um, but if you can avoid products manufactured in China, it's better because it's very well known that Chinese manufacturers don't have the best quality control and their products can be contaminated with heavy metals. But if you work with a company that is a reputable supplier, uh, they will uh, check and they will assay their lots before they ever use them and they'll screen for heavy metals. Okay, how long should we keep the X39 patch on before replacing it? Put it on in the morning, remove it at night. About 12 hours is what's recommended. Do not leave X39 on all the time because your body will get used to it. So don't leave it on for 24 hours. Take it, put it on in the morning, remove it at night. What's the daily dosage of copper? Well, let's say about two to two and a half milligrams would be very, very common. Uh, we're looking at research now, uh, taking up to four milligrams per day, and we're going to uh, look to see what happens. We've done blood studies now, where we have people on no copper supplementation, and their copper peptide levels go up 30 to 40 percent within about seven days, which is fantastic. Now what we want to do is give people four milligrams of copper per day, two milligrams twice per day, and see what effect that has on their copper peptide levels. Uh, let's see. Hi, David. I know you take five to seven milligrams of copper per day. How much magnesium glycinate? Um, yeah, so I vary with this. I take about, I take a two milligram supplement of copper midday and then 2.5 milligrams with dinner. Uh, plus I, I have copper in my diet, so I easily get more than five milligrams daily. And uh, I do pretty well with that. On the magnesium, let's say a typical dose of magnesium might be 200 to 400 milligrams per day. 200 is uh, safe, meaning that uh, the side effect of magnesium is that it can give you diarrhea. It loosens up the bowels. Uh, so it's good if, if you're constipated. Um, but 200 milligrams or so is pretty safe. And uh, taking 400 milligrams total per day would be quite a normal dose. All right, let's see how many more questions should we get here. Um, Are we classified as a class one medical device? We self-declare as a general wellness product. Uh, this is a category that the FDA established uh, back about five years ago now. So we are a general wellness product. That's an FDA category today. How would you apply the X39 to help a meniscus injury uh, would you put one on each side for how long? Okay, so uh, we don't recommend our products for the treatment of any type of medical condition. You'd have to speak with your doctor. If you're going to use X39 to assist with the healing of the injury, our studies show you can really put it anywhere. Um, so you could put it directly, one directly on the injury if you wished. Um, another way to do it, you could put an Eon at the point of pain and then you could put a X39 parallel to that or on the back of the neck or below the belly button. <laughs> Would larger patches work better? How did you, predict, uh, how did you pick the particular size? Yeah, you know, this is uh, part of experimentation. The, uh, you do not have to stimulate a very large area of skin. In fact, you can activate receptors in the cells, which is little as one packet of photons. So um, larger patches are not necessarily more effective. How much, oh, this would be a good question to end with. How much dark chocolate do I need to eat to get the right amount of daily copper? Uh, it really depends on the rest of your diet. And uh, it's also going to depend on the percentage of uh, cacao. 
So anyway, I would say just go ahead and look that up. But um, you should really be shooting for two milligrams of copper in the diet. I know that the FDA recommends less than one milligram, but there's evidence to show that if you only get less than one milligram of copper daily, it leads to a copper deficiency. So I think the FDA is wrong on this and the clinical research that's been done for decades shows that two milligrams is required and uh, more than that actually to uh, get better effects. So um, I would take a look at what type of things that you enjoy. Uh, so would you wanna have cashews or sesame seeds or liver or dark chocolate every day or kind of mix those up? So it really depends. Um, and and it, like I said, it depends on the percentage of cacao. So you can just easily look that up on the internet and you'll see your answer. Okay, we are past the bottom of the hour, so time for me to go. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you for being here. I wish all of you well. Stay safe and remember, stay positive. We're gonna get through this. Um, I know this, is, this global pandemic has a lot of people with uh, causing a lot of anxiety and stress right now, but we're gonna get through this. We're gonna be fine. And there's lots of tools available to protect yourself and protect your family. So thanks so much and have a wonderful evening.